Chand. Our next guest is known as the master of mid and small cap. So let's go straight to him, Vinit uh, Samran. Uh, absolutely. Vinit is with us. He's head of equities at DSP Investment Managers. Vinit, good to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, hi, hi. How are things looking, uh, Vinit, uh, to, to you? Uh, you know, you would, uh, you've been cautioning about some, a little bit of slowdown in earnings at the margin. I remember after the third quarter, you know, in the middle of the last quarter when we spoke, uh, it's still early in the earnings season, uh, but uh, what are the trends that you're noticing? So, Prashant, I think clearly, uh, you know, we are seeing some bit of uh, moderation when we think talk about the earnings because, uh, you know, largely uh, linked to the consumption basket and also more importantly, within the consumption basket, we've seen, we are seeing that, you know, uh, the uh, entry level or the, uh, you know, rural side or the bottom of the pyramid, I think that's, the category which is uh, sort of uh, slowed a bit and it is also maybe uh, casting some bit of impact on uh, the urban markets now. So I think there is some bit of that slowdown which is there. Maybe, uh, you know, people are sort of uh, wanting to save slightly more given where the inflation is right now. I mean, it is cooling off, but I think people just want to be on uh, or on the uh, side of a bit more caution is my sense but i think uh, you know as we uh, move along there should be uh, two or three uh, aspects which uh, we are uh, sort of monitoring so first of all i think uh, over the next one or two quarters the impact of this uh, slowdown should be felt and we should see uh, the uh, you know recovery post that uh, and uh, even with a moderate level of recovery uh, i think what could happen is that uh, the uh, companies which were also impacted because of the higher input prices those are seeing the benefits now. So I believe that even if we may slow a bit in terms of the overall top line growth, the bottom line growth uh, should start improving. It may not necessarily immediately in this quarter or next quarter, but beyond that, my sense is that should start happening. And uh, it will be a good positive if, uh, you know, let's say pre-election led spend starts to improve uh, the overall consumption, the investments which have taken place till now those start showing up in terms of improvement in consumption, I think that will be a double sort of a positive uh, for the market. So maybe over the course of next one or two quarters, we may bottom out as far as the markets are concerned is is, is my sense. Okay, you may bottom out. I think you're the second person telling us that, that this market may bottom out now. Uh, you know, there was a global guest earlier in the day as well, Ed Yardini, who said that the second half of the year could be much better than the first half. Just wanted to point out a couple of more stocks, right? Uh, Macrotech developers, actually, the guidance was very strong for FY24. They spoke about a 20% increase in pre-sales. They're looking at 14,500 crores of pre-sales compared to 12,000 crores that they did in FY23. So the street is latching onto that. The other stock which uh, I like is uh, uh, Scient this morning. So another 3% rally. Remember, Scient has put in almost 50% this year. So it's, you know, outperformed all of its peers as well as it done pretty well for itself. So these are just a couple of stocks in the broader markets. But um, <clears throat> Vineet, good morning and thanks for being with us on the channel. One thing is for sure that, uh, you know, there's a big trend that you're seeing where IT stocks have taken a backseat because of earnings and the impending recession and banks have once again taken the leadership spot. Uh, would you churn money out of IT and into banks now or what is the best, uh, the most prudent strategy here? So, in fact, uh, I think our overweight stance on banks continue and uh, we are watching that uh, categories uh, uh, with more, uh, let's say, carefully because uh, the fact is that, you know, at some point, uh, the NIMS would sort of peak out uh, over the next one or two quarters and then how uh, the valuations at that point in time are will, uh, you know, uh, uh, drive our decisions uh, in that category. But for the IT sector, I think, uh, Sunia, for us, uh, it has been more a long-term view which we have to take here. Uh, we had uh, trimmed some bit of our exposure uh, early on and we are slightly underweight on the sector, but we would like to, uh, you know, eventually own, uh, you know, some bit more of the, uh, uh, from the IT sector because we believe in the long-term uh, growth potential of the sector. Uh, just that the current uh, dynamics would uh, lead to some bit of more valuation correction is our sense and hence we are sort of on the sidelines at the moment. Uh, maybe at better price points we may want to accumulate uh, uh, the stocks within the category. Uh, now within that I think the large caps have uh, come off uh, quite well and there I think there is uh, some bit of uh, uh, you know bottom formation happening if we consider their free cash flow yields they have reached decent levels. But as far as the mid, uh, mid cap pack is concerned, there I think still some bit of more uh, stress looks like, given the fact that most of the 
uh, end user is uh, sort of again slowing and the expectations around uh, these companies are pretty high. Hi, Vineet. Good morning. Nigel on this side. Uh, Vineet, you know, it's been uh, tough times actually for active uh, fund managers. I'm looking at the performance of the last few years. Passive mutual funds, well, uh, the returns have been a little bit better. My question to you is, given that we're in a challenging environment and maybe the headline index doesn't have too much on the way up, do you think that this time around active funds will make a comeback, you know, say in the next 18 to 24 months? Because that will be contradictory to what we have seen in the previous 18 to 24 months. Nigel, actually, I would believe in that, uh, you know, given the fact that last two years were also extraordinary, it was very difficult to really factor uh, some of the changes which are taking place across different sectors, the quick moves which are taking place. So I think in that sense, it was more a beta market and, uh, you know, just being present in those categories at the right time uh, meant that, you know, you get good returns. But I think going forward next two years, uh, I would agree with you, it is more fundamental driven market, you know, where your assessment of companies and businesses which are likely to outperform uh, should drive the outperformance. And hence, I would believe that if, uh, you know, one is uh, uh, putting in, uh, the, the putting up the portfolio more uh, in a rational manner and, you know, trying to look for uh, good prospects within that, I think stock selection should matter. And hence, there is a scope. Uh, I won't say that, you know, active uh, will surely outperform, but there's a good scope for active uh, fund managers to outperform uh, over the next one or two years. Uh, Vineet, uh, you know, you, you want to point us in the general right direction? If active is going to do well, it is going to be active stock picking, right? Uh, a few a few ideas, a few, uh, in, or rather point us in the right direction, general right direction, that will help. See, Where are you uh, seeing opportunities now? Yeah. So, see, broadly, the way we are sort of thinking about uh, looking at uh, going overweight, are, uh, let's say, not focusing on sectors, but what are the trends uh, which where we are, uh, you know, inputting our incremental capital. So one is that we are seeing a lot of companies which has made a decent amount of investments into CAPEX uh, in the last two years. I mean, last two years were difficult years in terms of, uh, you know, the um, uh, pandemic and all of that. But still, there are a lot of companies which have done investments. Now, uh, also the other fact is that while they have invest invested, they have not levered up the balance sheet. That is an important aspect. And in general, uh, some of these companies have been generating decent ROEs. So I think that's a good combination where investments has happened. Uh, balance sheets are not levered. Uh, ROEs were good. And the growth is a bit uh, slower at the moment uh, for whatever reasons. And so I think that's a, that's a good place to be in because we will go by the management's instinct of, uh, you know, uh, seeing uh, uh, the these investments paying off in terms of uh, revenues. And that would also lead to higher uh, profitability and higher ROCs as they move forward. So I think that's one pocket. The other pocket is basically where there has been a cyclical slowdown and the external environment has impacted uh, some of the sectors. So as an example, healthcare is one sector where uh, things were a bit slow, uh, and, uh, and the Im bigger impact was uh, the profitability got affected because of higher mm -hmm. input prices, higher freight cost, and all of that. I think that's one category, and there are aligned categories similarly, uh, agri, agro based co companies, and all of those where the profitability has, has got hurt and the cycles were low. So, I think that's one category where the cyclical recovery should play. The third category, broadly similar uh, basket, is the automobile as a category, both auto, auto, and ancillary, where not only India, but world over, we have uh, slow down and uh, these cycles can change. So I think these are some, uh, let's say, categories which, which uh, we are sort of uh, aligning our uh, capital more towards. Sure. You know, I was going through uh, some of the funds that you manage, uh, just taking an example of the DSP mid-cap fund, right? Uh, you have a large presence in some of the spaces that have not done much for investors. For example, pharmaceuticals, you know, names like Alchem Laboratories, uh, Ipka Laboratories, something in the specialty chemical space like an Atul Limited. Uh, these stocks have really not done too much. And there are concerns here as well. Uh, what do you do with spaces like this? Do you churn out? Do you keep the faith? Yeah, so, yeah, so I think uh, we are keeping the faith. And as I said uh, in my last answer, I think these are some of the names where they have seen, uh, uh, you know, extraordinary impact because of, as I said, maybe higher input prices, and which has hurt their profitability, which is normalizing now. And my sense is that over the next one or two years, we should see the mean reversion actually helping these companies. And 
uh, uh, within the names you mentioned, I think the uh, uh, some of the specialty chemicals has done huge investments, not done in the last five, mm. seven years in the industry. Mm. So I think those should also start benefiting these companies. So I think our sense is that we would like to keep faith in these names. And uh, I think once these investments starts to uh, benefit these companies, I think it will uh, see its own, uh, you know, uh, uh, recovery in terms of performance as well. All right. We hope uh, for the sake of investors and for your fund that some of these stocks recover. Thanks a lot, Vineet, for joining in. It's been a challenging last uh, one to one and a half years. Uh, hopefully things will get better from here. But let's move on.